Hey guys, welcome to video number two of this three-part series of the Avid CNC 48x48 assembly. We're starting off with the linear rails for the Y-axis, which get mounted on the left and right side. Here you see me just dropping the bolts into place and using the T-nuts uh, and putting them on with the uh, screwdriver, the uh, power screwdriver. It's nice and easy when you can just go down the line and secure them that way. And then just assemble them into the top rail, uh, sliding them on one by one. Fairly straightforward. Once you get that linear rail into place, you can work on uh, lining it up. And that, uh, in order to line it up, you use this little aluminum block that Avid supplies and you secure it to the top of the aluminum extrusion. And the idea is to clamp the linear rail in place to that aluminum block on both ends as you see me doing here. Once you get it clamped on and it's tight and everything's parallel to the gantry, or excuse me, not to the gantry, to that uh, uh, extrusion, you can go ahead and just go down the line and tighten them all up. After you get the linear rail in place, go ahead and get the uh, roll the, the uh, T nuts and the uh, bolts in the gear track installed and slide that in place on the lower portion of the extrusion rail as you see me doing here that doesn't get uh, aligned with that uh, aluminum jig it just gets uh, put in place with a specific measurement I think it's like four inches in from the uh, front of the extrusion and then once you get it in place just go ahead and tighten that down and you'll repeat that step on both sides obviously I'm only showing one side uh, the next step is preparing your linear bearing blocks and that's just pulling them out of their packaging and orienting the uh, grease zerks to the outside uh, Avid calls for a very specific orientation that these bearing blocks need to be installed on so just make sure you follow the written instruction written instructions excuse me when you do that I found that these little zerks were a little finicky putting them on but with a little patience I got them once you slide them on the rail that little black interior piece is gonna slide out and you will find that it uh, is gonna be a little rough sliding it on the rail that's to be expected once you get them greased up and they get moving under load with the gantry it they seem to function just fine and I've heard that from other people that they're a little rough going on at first after you get your linear bearing blocks on just go ahead and secure the plastic dust covers with the uh, t-nuts and uh, screws and there's two of these uh, dust covers per side a short one and a long one and they just meet up on the top portion of the extrusion And then uh, after you get your plastic dust covers on, you're going to put these uh, bumper plates on. And there's four of them. Uh, there's two in the front and two in the back. They serve two purposes. One is to provide a mechanical stop for the Y axis, uh, uh, Y plus and Y minus. And also they provide a cosmetic cl cleanup for the end of the extrusion, which is visible. They make it a lot more appealing to look at. So, and they also provide a mount for the uh, proximity sensor, um, the little piece of metal that has to be there that the proximity sensor senses on. So here I am putting the uh, riser plate on and that takes eight bolts as you just saw me do. And here I'm using roll-in T-nuts and bolts, a uh, total of 10 of them, which the riser extrusion is going to slide down on. So you can see the configuration of those little T-nuts. They're all pointing down. That's the way they're gonna wanna be installed with the exception of those bottom two. Uh, as you slide that riser extension down, you're gonna wanna get underneath that with your hands and flip those two up as you'll see later. Here I am just putting uh, the 
think it's called a riser plate uh, on top of the uh, riser extrusion and that's what the actual gantry is going to sit on. So here I am sliding it on those T-nuts like I was just saying to men mentioned a minute ago and just get underneath it with your fingers and flip those bottom two up around the other side so they're not visible from the bottom. And go ahead and tighten them up. The next step in the process is to attach these uh, plates which attach the gantry risers to the gantry itself. If you notice there's six bolts on the lower portion of this plate and eight bolts or excuse me holes in the uh, upper portion of this. Uh, just make sure that you orient this plate correctly when you go ahead and install it onto the uh, riser. The next step in the assembly process is placing uh, an end cap on the left side of the gantry. So you're looking at the left side of the gantry, but you're looking at it from the back side here. So I end up off camera putting it actually on, onto the machine itself. Just make sure that this end plate is oriented correctly. There's two holes on the bottom which are slightly offset from center. And it's critical that you pay attention to what you're doing. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to screw the uh, the gantry onto the uh, the end the riser plate itself and right there where I'm screwing that screw in is where I'm talking about if you don't get it right it's not going to go in so then go ahead and secure your gantry on the left side and the, on the back you're looking at it from the back uh, in this view right here uh, just go ahead and screw, put your bolts into those T-nuts that are already in position behind the red plate and uh, go ahead and tighten it down. Once you get your gantry installed, uh, you're going to have one end of the uh, end plate that's not installed and we leave one end off the right side off specifically so you can install the the gear track on top of the gantry itself and also the linear rails so you can see that there's no no end cap there and that's for that reason so you can mount these these parts and just take your time and one by one slide the gear track on Position your gear track accordingly. It's like 70 millimeters. Not sure the exact spec. It's in the instructions. Then go ahead and uh, drop your bolts in your linear rails, which will get mounted to the gantry. And then secure the T-nuts on the bottom. And here you can me do, see me doing that with my uh, uh, cordless drill. Goes real quick. Use the cordless when you can, but always follow up with uh, manual uh, hand tightening just to make sure you get your torque right. Here I am sliding the top linear rail onto the gantry. Just one bolt at a time. When you install this, line this top linear rail, you're going to end up reusing that aluminum block that Avid provides to align it to the uh, gantry itself and make sure it's uh, parallel. The lower linear rail is aligned with the actual z-axis mounting plate. And then once you get your linear rails on, you can go ahead and put your end cap on the right side. Again, paying attention to the orientation of those two bottom holes, making sure you get it right. And go ahead and secure it on to the uh, end of the extrusion.
Then the next step is securing the uh, back of the gantry on the right side. You're looking at it from the back uh, with those uh, bolts again. Again, I'm using a combination of a cordless drill and a handheld uh, T-nut driver. And here you see me going ahead and put, roll, putting in those rolling T-nuts on the top of that gantry so I can get that aluminum alignment block installed, as I mentioned a moment ago. And like we did on the side linear rails, we're going to go ahead and clamp that upper rail in place on both ends and run down that linear rail with our uh, screwdriver and tighten them all up and torque them in after that. So once you get that top rail installed, you can go ahead and remove your clamps, remove your alignment blocks, and uh, work on installing your linear bearing blocks on those two rails and just repeat the process that you did on the uh, the sides of the machine on the y-axis uh, avid doesn't call for any particular order that they go in uh, like they did in the previous time like they did previously just make sure that when you install them that your grease fittings, your little brass grease fitting, fittings, excuse me, are on the outside to where you can access them, access them. And like the side, like the side bearings, they were a little difficult at first to get sliding on the, the linear rail. They just seemed like they didn't want to move so much as or easily and freely. But I just greased them up. I put about three, three or four pumps of grease in each block, and that seemed to uh, help a little bit. And then when I got the uh, Z-axis plate on, that helped even more. So next step was installing the uh, X-axis uh, mechanical stop, which you see me doing here, and the little rubber bumper plates. This is the little, uh, I'm putting in two of these roll-in T-nuts on the back side of the gantry. Uh, and there's a uh, metal sensor flag. It's called a sensor flag for the X-axis. Uh, so when the proximity sensor comes by, it, it, it'll pick up on that metal piece and it'll know when to stop. That's what you see me installing here. And again, there's a specific measurement. Just pay attention to your instructions. Okay, here I am installing the Z-axis mounting plate. This is what your spindle is going to mount to. And there's uh, 16 bolts which hold this in place on those uh, four bearing blocks. And I'm kind of going fast forwarding the video. Uh, but I wanted to show all 16 bolts that are used because there are a number of holes on this plate itself. So just make sure you use the, the correct holes when you mount this plate. And you can see the two big holes at top. That's for uh, uh, where your motor mounts to. So once you get that installed, you can slide it over to the left side and start tightening down the bolts. And Avid's instructions are pretty uh, informative as to how you go about and complete this process so just pay attention to, to what they say and how, how it's done it's fairly straightforward and this top plate I'm inserting the locating pins on each side and that's going to go in on the top of the uh, z-axis plate just like you see here and I'm going to go ahead and secure that in place and screw it in with those uh, with 
two uh, larger bolts into those two holes. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for video number three, folks, because that's coming up. And that's the final video showing all the wiring, electronics, and spindle mounting. Thanks again.